What's up, you guys? This is Prophetess um, Kimberly Moses. I'm going to go ahead and share to my networks. So come on in, come on in. Amen, amen. Getting ready to share to my networks. We're going to talk about some good things tonight. Amen. I got a few announcements. So I am excited. Amen. But God is good. I know I've been MIA. God bless you. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to talk about some good things tonight. Amen. Some good things. God bless you. How you doing, woman of God? Good to see you. I know I've been in my A. Amen. <laughs> but God is good. Amen. God is good. So I'm getting ready to share to my networks. Amen. And get on Periscope and we're going to give this word. Amen. And we're going to talk about some stuff tonight. Yes, yeah, so all. Let me know where you're coming in from. Amen. Let me know where you're viewing from. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So let me go ahead and get live on Periscope. All right. We can talk about this. Amen. Can we turn like this? All right. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in. All right, swipe, share, I'm prophetess Kimberly Moses. How you guys doing? God bless you. So tonight we're going to be talking about the making of uh, the prophet series. Every, you know, I try to do, I was doing it every week. But anyways, I'm going to start being more consistent and get on this teaching. Amen. Because it's so much. All right. A lot of you guys got a prophetic anointing on your life, a prophetic gift. Amen. A lot of people got questions over your head. So I want to invite you guys you know, to join the School of the Prophets. It starts January the 4th. Uh, that's Thursdays. It's going to be Thursday nights for three months. I've written a book called The School of the Prophets, A Curriculum for Success. Um, I've written another book. It's not out yet officially, but my students are going to get it early. Um, it's called Enhancing the Prophetic in You, so I'm excited about that. God bless you. Amen. And I got another book coming out, a third book. So, yeah. Anyways, I have another announcement. But before I get into that one, if you uh, want to sign up for the School of the Prophets, you can go to my website, prophetessk.org or KimberlyHargraves.com. Amen. And sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. All right. It is worth your investment. All right. So, um, I got a new book, y'all. Yay! God is good. It's called Conquering the Mind, a daily devotional. I had anxiety, you guys, for five years. For five years, I had anxiety. And the enemy was trying to torment me. So I tried, you know, uh, you know, pills. The pills didn't work. I tried therapy. They didn't work. But I feel I feel the fire God when I'm talking like this when I testify. Whoa, Jesus. I feel his anointing. My God. But uh, the power of God set me free. So I share my testimony and, you know, just things to eradicate any fear in your life, eradicate any negative thinking in your life. So we, we talk about that in this book. All right. 50 plus anointed devotionals amen see it's the anointing that destroys the yoke all right so you can get this book on amazon pre-order the book on amazon amen so i thank you guys for joining me all right so we're going to talk about the prophet ezekiel tonight all right why are we spending our time talking about prophets all right because if you're a prophet of god amen or you know if you're interested in the um uh, the prophetic you need to know some foundation about the prophets you know we can prophesy a lot of you guys can prophesy you know for hours when the spirit of the lord comes upon you but you have no strong uh biblical knowledge of the the, the prophets all right so i always testify i said when god called me you know he said you're a prophet i said what i wouldn't have been thinking about it amen um and I, I thought a prophet was a, a caucasian white guy with a beard you know obese caucasian guy with a beard but later on i found out there were women prophets i had to get in the word of god and and study amen so we're going to talk about this tonight um if if you missed any of these previous teachings you can go to my youtube channel which is kimberly hargraves or Tron moses amen and look up my name the make another prophet you can get caught up all right so God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Um, heart me up. Swipe share. So the name Ezekiel, his name means seized by God. Amen. You know, if you belong to God, if you're a prophet of the most high God, I'm going to, you know, talk about that. You have the hand of the Lord upon your life. You cannot do what you want to do. Amen. You cannot do what you want to do. 
So what do I mean? You know, you belong to God. You are not your own. You've been brought with a price. So his name meant, his, the name Ezekiel means seized by God. You know, or the Lord strengthen it, strengthen it. Some of the things we go through, we need God's strength. Amen. We need God's strength to get through. So one of the things about this prophet, and we're going to talk tonight about visions. We're going to talk tonight about angels. And I talked a little bit about visions last time. Um, I talked about the seer last time. That's the same thing as a prophet. All right. According to the scripture, um, you know, he was a visionary prophet. You know, God, whenever God's spirit came on this prophet, and I want you to catch this, amen, um, he began to see. All right, he began to see. All right, let, let me pull up Joel chapter 2, that scripture. Hallelujah. So, uh, all right, so when God came upon this prophet, he began to see. All right, so hallelujah. So in, in Joel chapter 2, uh, verse 28, God says he's going to pour his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. He's going to pour his spirit on all flesh. There's no discrimination in that. Amen. And he said, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So that's exactly what happened. When the spirit of the Lord came upon Ezekiel, he began to see visions. So we're going to talk about this. So we're going to start from chapter 10 and we're going to cover chapter 12 tonight. I'm going to skim through this thing. Amen. And we're going to cover angels. All right. So <sighs> prophets are sensitive to the presence of God. There's a sensitivity uh, that a prophet carries that is so sensitive to the spirit of God. Amen. You can walk into a place and you could be like, okay, there's no anointing here. There's no glory here. So this prophet, he had a vision of God's glory departing from the temple. Amen. And in this vision, it was so profound. And I know a lot of you guys, um, you see angels. Um, you see things in the spirit. You uh, probably don't even know what you're seeing. It's probably above your head. I'm like, okay, God. So, in this vision he had, um, there was jewels, like sapphires, shiny jewels. They were shaped like thrones. Amen? They were shaped like little uh, thrones, and they were above um, the, 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 the cherubim's head. The angel's head are the four living creatures. And in verse 20, in Ezekiel 10, verse 20, he calls them cherubims. But I already told you, I explained in great detail uh, how the four living creatures uh, look like. We, we covered this in chapter 1. Amen. So we see in Ezekiel 10 verse number 1. There was like little jewels. Shaped like little thrones. Amen. See that is so symbolic. Because we know that the angels. They worship you know. Uh, around God's throne. Amen. We know that when we look at various scriptures in the word. And they cry out holy holy holy. Amen. Worthy is the lamb. Alright. So. Check this out in verse number two, Ezekiel 10, if you follow me, verse number two, uh, you know, the angel spoke to, uh, excuse me, the Lord spoke to this angel. Um, when you go back, if you missed his teaching, I'm just going to jump right in here. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we see that Ezekiel had a, a vision of, of this angel. He had some linen on. God gave him an assignment and he uh, pretty much had to put a mark on the people's head that was crying out for uh, injust, crying out against injustice. All right, I'm, st I'm still on. Can you see me? Can you see me? Let me know if you can, sh if you can still see me. Can y'all see me on Facebook? Let me know. I know I know my Periscope froze. And sorry, I apologize, you guys, for the connection. I, you know, I live in the country, so, <laughs> yeah, this is like, ah. Uh, so, can y'all see me on Facebook? Okay, good, good, good. All right, it's, it seems like my periscope froze. Okay, thank you. Okay. So it seems like my periscope froze. Okay, I don't know, but okay, awesome. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go back with it. Okay, so what I was saying, so, uh, um, Ezekiel had a vision of an angel. He was dressed in white linen, and the Lord told him to uh, put a seal on everybody's head that's crying out 
against injustice. And this angel went out, and everybody did, that did not have that seal on them, amen, they faced uh, judgment from the Lord. All right, so the same angel uh, that was putting the, the seal on people's head, um, God gave him an, an, an assignment. And he said, go to the four living creatures. And I want to remind you that the four living creatures, they were covered in God's glory because they were, you know, in, in his presence. They were covered in his glory. So he told the, this, this angel, and they, they appeared like men. I'm going to talk about th that too, how angels can look like men. And um, um, some of you guys will entertain angels unaware according to the scripture. Um, and he said, go put your hands in in the four living creatures will and get some fire amen um so the angel of the lord he just obeyed god and we know that angels they do the lord's bidding according to scriptures all right they're so obedient to god they don't even ask any questions they just do it and that's how we need to be as prophets amen you know obey god amen obey god rather than men so he he put his hands in his fire and uh god said just go ahead and scatter it across the city because god was you know um executing his judgment because of some of the things that was going on the wickedness the abominations in in, in the temple that's why the glory of the lord de departed from the temple in verse uh chapter 10 all right so what happened you know the these angels these seraphim not seraphims but these uh these angels these four living creatures their wings were massive and they began to make a loud sound as they begin to thunder and begin to clap Amen. It was almost like the voice of the Almighty God speaking. These how uh how massive and big these wings were. All right. So uh in 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 cha excuse me, chapter 10 verse 8 through 20, it gives a description about what Ezekiel was seeing. Could you imagine seeing this that you see these four living creatures, they have four different heads, you know, a head like a a chair a, a cherub like an angel a man a lion an eagle and then they had eyes all over their body eyes everywhere they were standing on the wheel the wheel was in one direction and across and into another direction amen could you imagine seeing this see god he, he gives a, a special grace amen to some of his people to be able to handle that you know, some of you are bona fide seers. You, you see deep in the spirit and you see all kind of things. I myself personally, I've seen Jesus Christ ten, up to 10 times or uh, more than 10 times. Amen. Around 10 times. I, I lost count. You know, uh, when uh, the Lord called me into this thing, he started appearing to me. So, you know, listen, God will give you a special grace to handle this. And God gave Ezekiel a special grace to, you know, interact with angels and he also gave Zechariah his prophet a special grace to uh talk to angels when you read the book of Zechariah you see a pattern you know where uh the Lord would give Zechariah a vision and he'd cry out like God what am I seeing and he'll send an angel and the angel will give him the interpretation so so we see that all right so these angels they had eyes everywhere you know they, they had wings you know but underneath their wings they were like hands you know, um, it's it just a, a sight to see, a sight to see. All right. So let's talk a little bit about angels, some functions of angels, and then we're going to get back into the book of Ezekiel. All right. So we know angels, they, they act as guardians. How can you say that, prophetess? All right. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. Amen. When Adam and Eve got kicked out the, the garden, guess what? God sent angels to protect the tree of life and he also put swords in you know different directions and fire to keep the people out all right um angels we know they're around the throne of god or we we know they're around in, in god's presence we see that in in the ark of the covenant many of you guys know that the ark of the covenant uh it, it represents the presence of god back in the old testament amen and then we see that the ark of the covenant has something called a mercy seat and on the mercy seat was a throne in the middle, and it was two cherubims, you know, on the outside facing each other. We see that uh, if you, in the Bible, it's so detailed. It gives detailed descriptions of it in Exodus 25, verses 18 through 22. All right. So um, this, this is what uh, Ezekiel was dealing with. Whenever the Spirit of the Lord became, came upon him, you know, the glory began to manifest. He began to see. 
and I want to just give you some uh, uh, a practical tip, a practical application. Go worship. Amen. Worship the Lord. And I promise you, you know, if you have any prophetic oil in your life, you will begin to see. Amen. You know, get in his presence. Begin to see us never before clear, clearly. Amen. All right. So let's go to uh, Ezekiel uh, 11. Ezekiel 11. So, um, in this book, Ezekiel, he was still in a vision. And the Lord, um, he showed him with these wicked leaders. There was about 25 wicked leaders. And I know a lot of you guys probably have visions and dreams. Like you was like in your dreams, prophesying in your dreams, laying hands in your dreams, helping somebody out. I don't have so many visions like that. And that's a good indication of your future. That's a good indication of what God wants to do through you. All right. So Ezekiel, he had a, a vision. He had a vision of, you know, these 25 wicked leaders. You know, these, these leaders were so wicked. They were taking people's houses, uh, you know, kicking them out, just all kind of evil things, killing people, and they were prideful. They said in the word, I'm, I'm, I'm reading from Ezekiel 11, verses 1 through 4. They said, we are the best meat. Amen. We are the la creme of the la creme, or whatever you call it. Amen. And it's very prideful. All right, so God gave this prophet instructions. He said, go prophesy against them. Go prophesy against them. All right, he didn't ask any questions. So sometimes as a, a prophet, God will get you in a, a place of, you know, brokenness, where a place where you're literally wanting to yield. Like, okay, God, this is out of my comfort zone. I can't worry about what people think and say about me. I, I'm going to, you know, give this word. Amen. I'm going to obey you, God. I, I'm going to pay the cost. All right, so Ezekiel, he was... Uh, in a vision, and he began to prophesy. He began to prophesy. And guess what? As he was prophesying, one of the leaders dropped dead. He dropped dead. Um, and God did it as a, um, a sign of judgment that he wasn't playing. That he was not playing. All right. So what did Ezekiel do? Immediately when this person died in his vision, you know, he dropped dead when he's prophesying. He began to intercede. Amen. See, prophets, we got to be intercessors. Amen. How can you be a, a prophet of God and not pray? Prophets got to have a strong prayer life. Amen. It is mandatory. You got to pray. You know, in, in my book, and um, the woman of God on here, Gigi Love, reminded me of that. You know, she, she read a little bit out of my book. But there's so many prophets in the Word of God that went somewhere and prayed. Amen. So... You got to have a good prayer life, a strong prayer life. So as he was prophesying in his vision, one of the wicked elders fell down dead. And he began to intercede. He said, God, are you going to kill the remnant? The, the remnant? Lord, what are you doing? And then that's when God came and reassured him, like, no, the remnant is outside of the country. I sent away. Amen. There's a remnant that I'm preserving. Amen. So then Ezekiel got, you know, confirmation and a revelation of what God is doing. Sometimes we don't understand what God is doing, but God will, you know, confirm and God will explain. Amen. And let you know. All right. So uh, uh, in, in this vision, amen, in this vision, um, God told Ezekiel that there's a remnant that I'm going to preserve. And I'm going to deal with them in a way where they're not going to be idolatrous anymore. They're going to get rid of the abominations. Amen. So, when the vision ended, the Spirit of the Lord lifted up off of him. The Spirit of the Lord lifted off of him. Amen. All right. So, what did I say? I said in Job chapter 2, verses 28, you know, it tells us. Um, this was this, uh, the prophet Job. I talked about him too in great detail. Uh, you can find that on my YouTube channel. He, he gave a prophetic word and he said, you know, God was going to pour out his spirit on upon all flesh one day. And then what, what happens? You know, it's a pattern here. Amen. It's, it's steps here. Once God's spirit is poured out, you know, people will begin to prophesy. Sons and daughters will begin to prophesy. Uh, old and old men should dream some dreams and young men should see visions. All right. So that when that anointing left, when that, when that glory lifted, he began to, you know, uh, he, 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 he didn't see, uh, in the spirit anymore. The vision ended. All right. So we're going to go to, uh, chapter 12. We're going to go to chapter 12. Amen. We're going to talk about prophetic behaviors, prophetic behaviors. And I talk about this a lot in my upcoming book. 
All right, it's going to be book number 15. I want you guys to support me, amen, and get my book when it comes out. All right, it's called Enhancing the Prophetic in You. All right, so uh, I talk a lot about prophetic behaviors. All right, that is something that God wants you to do, amen. Sometimes it's over your head and you don't understand it, all right? So I talked a lot about this, about uh, how God used his prophet to do something out of his comfort zone. So one of the things that God had Ezekiel do in, in chapter 12, you know, I call it prophetic behavior. He had him pack all his clothes up in the daytime with everybody watching. He probably looked crazy doing it. You know, uh, when you when people in the biblical days got into exile, they had to uh, pack the belongings in a certain way. So God told this prophet, you know, pack up your clothes in the daytime like you are in captivity. And everybody was watching like, what's going on? But God was using him as a sign. All right. He was using him as a sign. All right. Because God told him uh, when he first called Ezekiel that I'm going to send you to a rebellious people that they see not with their eyes or they don't hear with their ears. They're just, they're, their hearts are hard. And God told Ezekiel to set his face like a flint. Amen. God told Ezekiel that, you know, that he's going to be with him, not to get discouraged about his call. In the same way God was with this prophet, he is with us. Amen. I want to encourage somebody tonight that God is with you guys. Amen. All right. So um, let's talk a little bit more about prophetic behavior. So God told Ezekiel, okay, at nighttime, you know, uh, I want you to put some stuff on your shoulders, your stuff on your shoulders uh, and act like you can't see. Amen. And this is what, and if somebody asks you what, what you're doing, say, this is what's going to happen, amen, to the king. So, sure enough, his prophecy came to pass six years later. And King Zedekiah, you know, he tried to disguise himself and sneak away at night. And he ended up getting blinded and uh, in, into captivity. So, we, we know that he was a true prophet, Ezekiel, because his prophecies came to pass. It took uh, a little while. Some prophecies, they, 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 they come instantly, you know. But then some prophecies uh, take a while to manifest. Amen. And somebody needs to hear that because some people on here, you got words over your head and you feel a little discouraged. You're just like, God, I, I need you, God, to come through, Lord. So, continue to hold on. Amen. So, let's go down to verses 17. All right. And, and through 20. And I also call these more prophetic behaviors. Why? Because God told Ezekiel, you know, I want you to eat and drink and, you know, some bread and water. And tremble when you do it. Just shake, you know. Why? Because God was using him as a sign, you know, to show uh, what was going to happen to the people. That there's going to be so much violence in the land that, you know, people are going to be trembling in, in fear. All right. Uh, well, when we go down a little bit. Um, and, and, and verse 26, and I'm, I'm, I'm in Ezekiel 12, verse 26 through 28. All right. There was an old crazy saying, an old crazy saying, and they call it the word of God calls it a Proverbs, you know, and the people was like, the days are prolonged and, you know, um, and the visions fail. The days are prolonged and the visions fail. Something crazy, you know, pretty much they're saying, we don't believe God, you know, God ain't here. He's not with us. So. God will, God raised up a prophet Ezekiel. He raised up this prophet to, uh, you know, turn the hearts back unto the people. Amen. I always tell you guys, a true prophet of God will turn the hearts back unto Jesus and not never themselves, never themselves. All right. Uh, a true prophet of God will go against the grain. You know, there was a, this proverb was uh, known in the land. Everybody was saying it. Well, the days are prolonged and the visions fail. So God raised up uh, Ezekiel. He said, prophesy against that foolish saying. Prophesy against it. All right. So uh, he began to say in verse 28, and this is profound, and we can apply this uh, right now to our everyday lives. Amen. You know that the visions of the Lord will come to pass. God's visions, God's prophetic word, they will come to pass. Amen. And judgment, everything he says he's going to do will not be delayed. Amen. God's judgment will not be delayed. All right, so um, we already know the um, prophetic 101, you know, the prophets, they're God's oracle, God's mouthpiece, right? Amen. So let me just, uh, let, let, uh, let me recap really quick. So I told you guys that Ezekiel, he had a vision and the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he saw the glory of God departing out of the temple. A prof Prophets have a strong sensitivity to the presence of God. Um, he had... 
he seen the four living creatures. This, they had eyes everywhere, and he saw this angel of the Lord put his hand up to the angel and uh, get some fire. We know God is the God that answers by fire, all-consuming fire. All right. Uh, he, he saw another vision of these wicked leaders, and as he began to prophesy, one of the leaders fell down dead. You know, in his vision, um, God was doing it as a sign, and then God had to use Ezekiel to do some prophetic behavior that they were going to go into exile, captivity, and it did happen. You know, they end up getting captured by the Babylonians later on. Amen. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight more. We're going to go into this a little bit more. We're going to talk about functions of angels. Now, the word of God is very clear not to worship angels. We don't need to be praying to angels. We don't need to be seeking angels. We need to seek God. We need to seek God and seek Jesus. Amen. It tells us very clearly in, I think, Hebrews. I want to say chapter 1 because these people were worshiping, idolizing angels. So... God had to send Apostle Paul to set order, you know, in the house and say, we, we, we don't seek angels. We need to seek God. We don't worship angels. He had to set it, set it straight that Jesus is higher than the angels. All right. So we, we're going to talk about angels because I know some people had encounters and I talk a, a, a lot about angels. Well, I mentioned um, in, in my new book that's coming out, uh, you know, maybe next month or February. Uh, it's called Enhancing the Prophetic in You. Please get that book. So I talk about how God, different ways God delivers his word. And one of the ways God delivers his word is through angels. So we see that angels are messengers of God. We see when angels appear to people, various people in the Bible, the first thing the angel said was, don't be afraid, fear not. Because it's something about when his angel appeared to you. Can you imagine what Ezekiel saw? The four living creatures with these massive wings and it had eyes everywhere. Most people can't handle that. They probably freak out and, oh, you know, they get scared instantaneously. But the angel always say, calm down. Don't be afraid. I'm not here to hurt you. All right. And they, and they gave the, the message. All right. So uh, angels, for example, when, when Daniel was, was praying, he was praying to God uh, about this prophecy that uh, Jeremiah wrote on the scroll and he was seeking God for some answers. Uh, you know, there was some opposition in the spirit. And I, I can go on and on about this, but I'm trying to keep it simple just about angels today. But there was some warfare in, in the spirit. And guess what? His angel needed assistance. But after the archangel Michael came uh, and, and helped him, then his angel, Daniel's angel, gave him that message. All right, whatever he was seeking the Lord for. Amen. The first time, he said, the first time you prayed, God heard you. Amen. The first time. All right, so we see, uh, for example, uh, Samson. I just read the book of Samson like a, a couple of days ago. Uh, his daddy, you know, his name was Manoah. Amen. I think you can read about Samson. He started at like Judges 13, chapter 13. And, um, you know, one day his his wife was barren samson's mother was barren and the angel of the lord appeared to her and he gave her a message with great instructions and details about what kind of child it was going to be and uh you know uh that she's getting ready to conceive and all this right all right he, he, the angel of the lord delivered a message we also see uh for example joseph a man when uh for example let's let me go back to mary all right uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary and told her she's getting ready to conceive before it happened. It was a message from God. How you doing, prophetess Misha? All right. Um, Joseph, when he was like, uh, this chick is pregnant. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't put this in her, but the angel of the Lord appeared to her, uh, him and to told him what was going on. When, um, they was in trouble because King Herod was trying to kill all the babies in the land, you know, under, uh, age two because you're trying to destroy uh, the Messiah Jesus Christ as a, a baby Jesus guess what the angel appeared to him and said go flee to a Egypt take your family and flee to Egypt why am I talking about all this because I'm trying to make it a point that God speaks through angels amen all right they are his messengers they they do the Lord's bidding the scripture says they do his bidding amen they, they they follow his commands i just told you in the book of ezekiel you know how god told that angel you know put your hands in in, in the fire from the four living creatures and go spread the fire uh, upon the city 
he he did it without any questions all right uh we see that angels are protectors they, they are protectors and what do you mean all right when daniel was in trouble he had some haters amen they try to stop him from seeking god three times a day because you know we, we know he prayed three times a day with that window open he wasn't trying to hide it he wasn't ashamed of the gospel right so guess what when um he was like i'm still going to pray unto my god you know he got thrown into the lion's den and guess what god sent an angel to shut the mouth of the lion up all right so the angels are called to uh to to protect us amen let me make sure i'm not missing anything hallelujah all right so we know angels they're worshipers you know i just told you guys about the ark of the covenant and they had two cherubims on on the mercy seat uh, facing each other you know they're they're in god's presence amen and they carry the glory uh we see that uh in in isaiah when god called him he had a throne room encounter and you see these seraphims like these big creatures with these six wings and these who light feet you know um so we see that they're around the throne room of god saying holy 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 uh, we know that angels are warriors amen god tells us that he will give his angels charge over us he will give his angels charge over us uh in in psalms 91 we, a lot of people know that psalms as the psalms of protection all right we know that they're warriors because um uh, i think it's second kings chapter 19 verse 35 and it said the angel of the lord went out to the assyrian camp and killed uh 1,800 assyrian soldiers amen and when when some of the soldiers w w uh woke up they saw these dead bodies everywhere you know we we know that god is the the lord of the angel armies he's all powerful he is all powerful amen so uh like i said before we're not supposed to worship angels amen we're supposed to seek god amen worship jesus only amen um what else i want to say about angels what else i want to say about angels all right so we know that uh angels appear to various uh, people in the word of god daniel jacob when he had the jacob's ladder um encounter um just zachariah joseph uh a angel of the lord appeared to jesus amen in the garden of gethsemane uh, when he was just kind of feeling like whoa i'm getting ready to be crucified tomorrow so the angel of the lord came and ministered strength and confidence to him um you know let me see what else what else i want to say about angels all right so we know the word of god tells us the angel of the lord camps around them that fears the lord amen uh delivers us all right so god will send an angel to protect you amen um i, I think it's what psalm 35 and it says uh, I, I use this for spiritual warfare that the angel of the lord will pursue the enemy amen chase the enemy you know it's protection um hallelujah it tells us in hebrews uh, chapter 1 and 14 uh that angels are ministering spirits all right and the, 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 the most profound thing I could say about the book of Ezekiel, some of these angels look like men. All right. Some of these angels in the word of God, they look like men. That's why Hebrews chapter 13, verse two, it says, you know, we, we entertain angels unaware. Amen. You probably entertain an angels. You don't even know it. You know, that's, that's the most profound thing. You know, ha have you ever had like a testimony, heard a testimony of, somebody praying out to god or somebody maybe in a car accident or, or in a deep place and they uh you know it's something strange happened they see a person appear out of nowhere and then they disappear but they end up helping them some kind of way you know angels unaware they're entertaining angels unaware amen i have heard so many stories my husband just gave a testimony if you haven't seen it it's called a drink of water uh, on youtube try moses youtube our team moses vlogs you can you can catch that and, and see that um you know uh he was in a, in a dark place in a trying time and this man came out of pretty much nowhere he didn't see the man uh go in the restaurant he didn't see the man leave the restaurant he just saw the man drive by and he came back and he came to him he said if you can ask god for anything what would you ask him for and he said a drink of water and the man just put out all these 20s 
all, all this money. And it just, you know, profound. It's like, what? So he said, buy all the water you want. So, I mean, we could probably ent entertain the angels unaware, you, right? All right. So that's all I want to say about angels tonight. You said, yes, it happened to you. Amen. Put, put your testimony up here. Amen. If you don't mind. Amen. I'm getting ready to, to pray. Um, I know it's going to do a prophetic miracle call tonight. A lot of people ask me, they said, prophetess, you want to do a call tonight? I, I want to, you guys. I'm probably going to do it Sunday. Um, sometimes Sunday. Um, you know, I know it's probably what, Christmas Eve. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Because I, I'm going to be traveling out of town and I'll, I'll be, you know, at my location then. Amen. So I will definitely do a, a prophetic call. Yeah. If you can go to my uh, mailing list at prophetsk.org. Amen. I'm going to send out the time and the number to the prayer call. The time and the number to my to my prayer call. And, you know, I want you guys, um, you know, uh, push star six. You know, for those of those uh, people come there early. I know some people call like an hour before the call start. I'm like, wow, God. You know, I did the last call. I think 87 people called in. I think that's very humbling, you know. So I thank God for that. That 87 people want want me to pray and speak in their lives. That's I just I thank God for that. So you know I don't want to waste nobody's time. If you're there early, like an hour early, push star six uh, when you call on that line when I do my call again. That way I can get you first. Amen. Yes, yeah, prophetess K. Uh, dot O R G. Amen. All right. So you know for the people that came on late, go back and watch the replay. Amen. Follow me on YouTube, uh, Kimberly Hargraves and. Um, watch these teachings, the making of the prophet, amen, and apply these teachings to your life, apply these teachings to your life, all right, I don't know what time yet, amen, I don't know what time yet, but I'm, I'm going to put that on the, um, in, in my email blast, now I want to say, you guys, this is my first Christmas back, all right, so my family's kind of, you know, like, Kimberly, Kimberly, we want you here, you know, because I was in the wilderness for like three years, so they 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 was like, oh my God, you gotta come over for the holidays. So I'm gonna squeeze it in, amen. I'm gonna squeeze it in. I was able to pray and prophesy to some people on Thanksgiving, amen. Cause I remember how it felt just being away from family. You know, for three years that's a long time. You know, uh, so I never wanna forget that. And I never wanna forget about somebody that's going through that dark time right now. So I, any any time I can comfort somebody with the same comfort God has given me. I'm going to do it. I'm all for it. All right. So let me just go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for King Senses, Lord God, in the realm of the Spirit. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your angels that, that's protecting us, God. We thank you, Father God, that your hand, that your hand, God, is upon our lives. We thank you for a prophetic anointing being released right now that our eyes can see and our ears can hear, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the God, Lord, that, that your ear is not deaf to our prayers, God. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah, Lord God, for who you are. You are all powerful, God. You are all strong, God. You are all mighty, Lord God. Lord God, we just magnify you, hallelujah. Somebody just begin to magnify God. Somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into prayer, amen. I'm going to take some prayer requests, hallelujah. I just feel like praying for a few minutes, hallelujah. Begin to magnify God. God is worthy, amen. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to prophesy and tell somebody on here, this is your hour of visitation. Amen. I start to feel the presence of the Lord begin to manifest. Amen. I'm starting to feel the, the glory. Amen. Begin to manifest. I need some people out here right now that's feeling heavy, feeling discouraged. Lift hands. Amen. And I send forth the fire, God, right now upon you to saturate you from your head to your feet. In Jesus' name, that depression has to break. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Heaviness has to go in Jesus' name, Lord God. Lord God, I just decree and declare this is our time. This is our moment, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. I decree and declare breakthrough. Amen. Holy, some people on here, you're watching me. You're discouraged about Christmas. Amen. Holy, oh, Jesus. I feel the fire of God on that one. Huh, I break that off of you in Jesus' name. I decree the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Lord God, I just thank you, God, for dreams and visions, Lord God. Give us a revelation, Lord God. God, reveal to us something new in this season. Some people right now, God, are crying out, saying, God, what, what is my assignment? God, I don't know, Lord God. Lord, well, what my purpose is, God, I pray that you can reveal it to everyone on this uh, broadcast today, God. That their purpose and their assignment, Lord God. 
God, I thank you, God, for your winds of change, Lord God. Lord, in our situation, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. I thank you for strength. I thank you, God, for your presence. I thank you for peace. Let me tell you something. Every storm has an expiration date. Every trial and tribulation is going to come out victorious. Amen. I don't care how dark it is. There's some people on here watching me. You're on your wits end. You're crying out, seeking God. Like, God, Lord, I, I need a confirmation. This is your confirmation to not quit. This is your confirmation. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. To not give up, to stay focused. Somebody on here, I see in the realm of the spirit. As somebody's family member, they, heard they had a head injury. It looks like a male in the spirit. You know, I, I don't, it's like maybe a craniology, uh, what is it called? A, a cranectomy, craniology, they took some, like some kind of major head injury. They took a portion of the skull off for surgery. Um, is anybody on here connected to, to that? Have a family member? You know, you believe in God for healing for a family member with a, with a head injury? You know, it's, it's right before my eyes. I mean, if, if that's you, let, let me know. Because I, I, I saw it in the spirit. Well, God, hallelujah, Lord. I just pray right now healing over this individual. And I thank you, Father God, for life. I rebuke death, the spirit of death, premature death, any afflictions and ailments. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God, by your stripes, this person is healed in, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. Lord, for who you are. And the Lord, he's, he's so faithful. He is so faithful. God, I thank you, Father God. Lord, for wisdom upon your saints. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. All right, so I'm going to try to get like two or three people on here. Amen. And let me see. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. God is good. Hallelujah. Yes, God is good. And I thank you, God, for your anointing. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Put somebody put their uh, request up here. An angel page your power bill then disappeared. Amen. Hallelujah. Diane Jackson, dear Kamabli, did y'all get your books today? Did y'all get your books? Cause I sent you guys a book. So hopefully I got your book. My new book, Conquering the Mind, a daily devotional. Let me know if you got your book or not. You know, I know some other people. They email me like, Prophet, I got my book. Thank you. Amen. All the time. God, I thank you, Jesus. All right. God, I pray for Vivian to be healed in Jesus' name. God, wherever she's at, God, I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, God. That your fire will touch her now. And I thank you, Father God, that sickness and disease got to go in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. It, it is on the way. Yes. You should, hopefully, you'll get it tomorrow. Yes. Lord God, I pray for um, Ingrid. Lord God, I pray for her family, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. I, I bind up stress off of finances, uh, stress, Lord God, off of this family, any tension. Lord God, I just thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that you have your way, God, in Ingram's life, in the name of Jesus. Yep, I sent your book, Jerrica. Yep. You know I got to look out for you guys. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, uh, for overflowing a double portion in her life, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord God, I pray for Angel Johnson, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. Did you show her her purpose? God, give her strength. Lord God, give her peace. Lord God, I, I thank you, Father God. I speak to that storm of her life, and I say, peace be still. Know that you are God. Lord God, I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. That you're going to take Angel Johnson higher, God. Lord God, I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God. That the gifts inside of her are stared up, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you, Father God, that you can plant her, God, where you want her to be planted, where she can grow. Lord God, by leaps and bounds. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. And I thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you too. I love you too. God, I pray for uh, Kathy Brown, God. 
I thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord, re release inheritance in Diane Jackson's life. God, I pray for her strength. I pray for her mind. Lord God, I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God. That wealth and riches will be in her house, God. Lord God, I thank you, Father God, that everything she has poured out to other people, she, she you have such a heart to give. I thank you, God, that, hallelujah, Lord God, that it will come back to her a thousandfold, Lord God. And I thank you, Father God, as she prays and intercedes for other people around her, God. I thank you, God, that you will make it happen for her. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So listen, you guys, I got to get off of here because I got to pack because I'm going out of town. Um, but I just want to come on here and encourage you guys. I don't know what happened to my periscope, which is cut off. Uh, but I'm going to come back. I try to come back Sunday and we're going to do this prayer call. Amen. I promise you guys, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to um, speak in your lives. Amen. Amen. All right. So, you know, go back, watch the replay. We talked about Ezekiel. We talked about angels. All right. Get my new book, Conquering the Mind, a daily devotional. Sign up, you guys, for the School of the Prophets, January the 4th. Uh, School of the Prophets, January the 4th. All right, three months training, uh, you know, program by me. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. All right, so I love you guys. You have a good night. God bless. <laughs>